it's nothing's really fun about it. It's a lot of expansion properties, but we we need to understand what uh, some properties of series are. A series is basically adding together terms of a sequence. And it breaks out this. I found Siri thought I was talking to her. Um, series breaks out the sigma notation. This is basically telling me the top number here is how many terms you're adding together for some sequence. And it's going to equal sum of numbers. Now we have properties of sigma that we're going to, that we can use, uh, where if we had to evaluate very large sums and we didn't have a calculator to do it. And we'll get to, th that will take us to some summation formulas that I get to here and uh, kind of towards the bottom. But, and we have some other little properties of sigma. I'll refer back to them in a minute. This little chart's gonna be helpful uh, for you with some of the problems you have to do today and for that little Desmos part assignment or the Google Drive assignment, I don't remember what it's called. And uh, it's also in the digital notebook too. I just copied it from there. So in case we haven't had time to watch a video in the Delta Math, if I'm given a series with the Sigma notation, to interpret what it means, what I would do for this first problem, if I just wanted to expand it, is this is your explicit equation. You start by taking whatever this first number is at the bottom. And that's the first number you put in for the variable that you see. The variable I plug in for is whatever this variable is on the bottom. So I'm gonna put one in for n and write down what I get. I get one. Series are adding. So then I go plus and then I put in two. So I keep increasing the size of my number by one until I get to the top number. So when I put in two for n, I get two. And then put in three for n, you get three. So basically, this is one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six. I'm going to add them together and get the sum, but that wasn't the point. The point was just to expand it and see what this represents. So it's taking an explicit formula adding together a certain number of terms to get a sum. That's how we expand sigma. And we'll do another one. So I want to expand this one. So the summation, the way you would read this, if I ever had to read it and sound intelligent, I would say the summation, that's what the big giant Greek E sigma, the summation of two to the n power from n is one to n is four is equal to, well, you start, first number you put in for n is one, so it'd be equal to two to the one plus, and then I would put in two for n, be two to the second plus two to the third plus two to the fourth power. And then you could simplify those if you needed to. Like that'd be two, four, eight, and 16 all added together. But important thing, series, you got to have the plus. Now that we've expanded a couple, let's rewrite a couple using sigma notation. Let's go to the other direction. So this is a little bit more complicated. So what I need to do, if I'm going to write this summation. Now, this is summation because even though it's minusing, technically, if I'm subtracting, I'm just adding a negative. You start by trying to find an explicit formula. So find the pattern in the numbers in the sequence that's given. I go from negative 2 to negative 6. Negative 6 to negative 10, we're minusing 4 every time. That's what kind of sequence? Tough crowd today. If I add or subtract by the same number every single time, it's an arithmetic sequence, which means that I could write... Arithmetic. 
Thank you, Echo. You're welcome. And write the uh, explicit formula of that by doing A1 plus D times N minus one because my series that I'm trying to write inside of it is the explicit formula. So the explicit formula for that ser series of numbers, sequence of numbers we're looking at, would be negative two minus four times N minus one. So writing that sum using sigma, I'm going to find the sum of terms produced by this sequence, negative two minus four times N minus one. Technically that needs to go inside of its own set of parentheses. The first number we used was when N was equal to one. That's our first term with the way we wrote our equation. So we'd go from n is equal to one to, well, how many numbers do we add up? One, two, three, four. We added the first five numbers. So on the top of sigma, I'm putting five. So you start with the first term, keep adding till you get to the fifth term, and that's what we're looking at. So this notation produces that series of numbers. So somebody tell me this one. I want to write this using sigma notation. So let's find the pattern numbers. Try to write the explicit formula and see what we can come up with. What's my pattern? What am I doing every time? It looks like the fraction is doubling. What do you mean by, all right, which is the same thing as multiplying by half. The thing is, is that I'm going from positive to negative to positive to negative. So it's so negative one half. Yeah, so I'm timesing by negative one half every time. You multiply by the same number every time that's geometric, which means that I could write an explicit equation for that sequence by doing first term times R to the N minus one power, where our first term is A1, is A which is three. So we're gonna write our summation here. That set of four numbers that we're looking at using that series uh, using sigma notation would be the summation of our explicit formula, which would be three times negative one half to the n minus one power, starting with, so we do our index number, which is what goes down here at the bottom. Now, I start with one, but I got to write the variable I'm using. So from n is equal to one to the, we added the four numbers. That last number is the fourth term. So we go to four on top. There's our equation. All right, this one might be a little bit of a head scratcher. See if you can write, so this one I'm going to tell you is not, it's neither geometric nor arithmetic in terms of this kind of sequence. But see if you can write an expression in terms of n that would create what I'm looking at, where my first term is what's inside the first set of parentheses. So that's going to be when n is 1, and then this is n is 2, and then n is 3, and n is 4. So they kind of group the terms together in parentheses, so that way you can see it. So see if you can determine 
an, an explicit formula that would create those fractions. Oh, make me break out the Jeopardy music again. Already still going in my head. I wouldn't mind if you play it. <laughs> break you up. Not play it. It's too stressful. Please, it gives me the urge of it. Well, give me an answer. It's uh, adds one to the bottom number. Yeah, well, I need an equation in terms of n. I don't know. So I need something where if I put in 1 for n, I get 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2. Yeah, it adds 1 over 1 to the right side. Notice how you both your fractions are – every single fraction has got a 1 on top. So that means – and i got to have two fractions subtracting. So I'm going to have 1 over something minus 1 over something. Well, when I put in 1 for n, my first fraction has to be 1 over 1, which means that my first fraction has to be 1 over n. My second fraction, when I put in 1 for n, I got to make that 2, which means that I, my second fraction needs to be whatever n plus 1. Plus I, one. That's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. The same well, that ain't what you said, man. No, I said it in like a confusing way because I wasn't like – there all the way like i was like i was like 50 percent there to the answer you got to be more clear man all yeah right. all right the last was foggy you know okay so my series could be represented by the summation of that explicit formula one over n minus one over n plus one where we start where n is equal to one and we go to n is equal to four that would give me my sum One more. It could be helpful if you're trying to figure out you know, how do I even start? Think of each of these numbers in terms of an n. They don't always have to start with one. You can start with zero or two or 10 or whatever, but at least it gives me something to start picturing. And it's like, okay, how can I make these fractions by putting in certain numbers for n? I need to make a one and a one fourth. 1 ninth, 1 16, 1 over 25, 1 over 36. What would the an explicit expression be? I don't know what it would be called, but it looks like like n equals 2 times. It looks like whatever n is times itself is the number you get. In the denominator, right? Yeah. So I could say my explicit formula would be, you could say 1 over n times n or 1 over n squared is my explicit equation. So if I can write an explicit formula, what it allows me to do is it will allow me to write this series using sigma notation. We started with the first term and we added six terms together for one over n squared to get our sum. Now, let me show you why, all right? Let's say I had, I don't know, like 30 of those numbers to do. And yeah, you could, if you had a calculator, type them all in and get your answer. But there's also a faster way using a calculator. It won't let me move it. On the TI-84, now if you don't have a calculator at home, uh, I've talked about it yesterday. If you have an Android device, 
you go to your Google store thing, whatever it's called, Play Store, I think, and look for Wabbit. It's like, uh, it starts with a W, like Elmer Fudd, but W A B I T E M U, Wabbit Emu. And they have an emulator for a TI 84, and it's free, and it looks just like the one that's on my screen. In fact, this is the computer version of the same app. You got an iPhone, you want to look for the app Calculate 84. Free app, does, it's got kind of the same buttons. But, and I think you can also do summation on Desmos, but at some point we'll be back in the building and we'd be nice to know where all the buttons are. There's a Sigma function on the calculator if you know where to look. So if I had a calculator, I press math and I go all the way down here to the bottom, there's says something called summation. And if I click on it, it gives me my sigma symbol and all these blocks to type in. So we were looking at finding the sum of n from n is equal to one. I could just use x and say x is equal to one to x is equal to six for one over x squared. Now, here's something else you can do that's actually going to be helpful for some of you is you can input fractions a lot easier if you do alpha y equals and it brings up a menu press enter it already makes the fraction line for you and all i have to do from here is press enter and it'll do all my work for me and it'll give me my answers a fraction if i wanted it or even as if i wanted the decimal i just divide those two numbers and get my sum so it's helpful to be able to write things in sigma notation because then if I could use my calculator to find the actual sum for me, if that was the goal. There's also formulas to find the summation of certain kinds of explicit equations. And that brings us to some summation formulas. The summation formulas we have are these four here. And these are the four that I'm going to be using in the next couple of problems. It's a, when do I actually need to use it? It's these uh, properties of summation are used in proofs in higher level maths. Um, it's the summation is used in proofs and some calculus concepts to find uh, area up underneath curves and some, and some other things. So I'm showing it to you in preps for that course because that's what should be coming next. So, and I only got two of these. We're almost done. Let's say I wanted to find the summation of this particular series. And we're looking at evaluating it when n is equal to 12. Now, if our sole mission in life was just to figure out the answer when it was 12, we could just, we technically could just type in our calculator and get the answer. Here's the bad news is on the uh, little assignment thing for Desmos that deals with Sigma. I wanna see the work that arrives to the answer. You can check your answer by using your calculator, but I wanna see us use the summation formulas. Our summation formulas are based on a couple of concepts. First, I have a property of Sigma that says if you are adding inside a Sigma, you can break this up into two separate problems. So I'm going to take my formula here and I'm first going to break it up. I'm going to rewrite this as the summation from I is equal to one to N of four plus the summation from I is equal to one to N of two I to the third power. My goal is to get my Sigma to look just like those summation formulas that I had uh, on the right hand side of this chart and we'll I'll refer back to it in a minute I have a summation formula for if I have I'm adding just a constant to itself in number of times the summation formula if I have something being raised to the third power I'm given but I have two times something being cubed so I'm going to use a pr property of summation which says if you have a number multiplying 
to the variable that you're inputting, you can pull it outside of sigma. You know, like I can factor it out per se. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to rewrite. So I'm going to get the summation from i is equal to 1 to n of 4 plus 2 times the summation from i is equal to 1 to n of i to the third power. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to our chart. So this first series from i is equal to 1 to n of a constant, according to our summation formulas, that's going to be this one right here. So if I'm adding a select number of terms and my value is the same constant over and over and over again, all I have to do is write that summation as c times n with no sigma. So that first one, I'm going to replace with the formula. So you tell me how many terms you want to add together. It's going to equal to what four times however many number of terms, four times n. And then we got plus, we're going to do our second one, which would be equal to two times whatever the summation formula I have is for cubes. Well, our summation formula to find the sum of a certain number of terms when I'm cubing is this one here, which says dependent upon whatever the value of n is, plug it in to this expression. And I'll tell you what the sum is without you having to manually type them in and compute them and add them together. So I'm going to write that fraction See if I can do that. Right there. So I just get that right off my list. And so our sum, what we have figured out is that the sum from I is equal to one to N of four plus two i to the third power is equal to four n plus, well, if I have two times that, I could just, let's just write it next to each other. Two times n times n plus one over two being squared. Here's the formula that I want it. So it's a summation formula that doesn't have sigma in it. Now that we have that, we want to evaluate when n is equal to 12. So when n is equal to 12, I would just put in 12 for all of my n's. And I would get my sum. And you use your calculator at that point. A 12,216. So this would be the answer that I would, that, that's what our summation formula gets. If I wanted to check, make sure I had the right answer, all that I would do is I would go into my calculator, I would type that in, except I would put a 12 right there where that n is and made sure those numbers match. And if they match, then I did it right. They didn't match. I got a mistake somewhere. That's how you check your answer. All right. One more. So I want to rewrite this series using summation formulas and then evaluate what I get when it's equal to 10. In order to do this, I need to break apart and use some properties of summation or properties of sigma. First thing we can do is we can break apart the subtraction. So I'm going to break apart the summation from i is equal to 1 to n. That's going to be 2i minus 
the summation from i is equal to 1 to n of 3i squared. The next thing that you can do is you can take any constants that are multiplying and pull them outside of sigma. So it, I'd have two times the summation from i is equal to 1 to n of just i minus three times the summation from i is equal to 1 to n of i squared. We have summation formulas for each of those. The summation formula for adding n number of terms from the explicit formula i. Go to my chart. Where's that? It's right here. It's equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. So I'm going to replace that first one with that summation formula in terms of n. And we're going to keep writing. We say got minus 3 times. Well, we have a summation formula for i squared in our chart. So I go to my chart. It's in your notebook. It's on this warm-up here if you need to refer back to it. And here's the summation formula of adding squares together. I'm going to go put it into my line. So this is pretty much mission accomplished right here. This summation that I blocked in formula is equal to this up here. So we want to evaluate when n is 10. So basically, what I'm trying to confirm is that if I was to put in a 10 up top here, that that's going to equal the same thing that I get if I put in 10 for all of these ends in our line. And you could confirm this using a calculator. So we would have 2 times 10 times 10 plus 1 over 2 minus 3 times 10 times 10 plus 1 times 2 times 10 plus 1 over 6. And to go get my sum. And I would check my answer both ways to make sure I did it correctly. I check it by typing it in using uh, sigma notation in my calculator, and then I would check it um, by using my summation form on the right hand side with 10 in for all those ends. And we wind up getting negative 1045. You can put that in the calculator and get it right. Like that's what you do, right? Here's what I would do. Here's what I want you to do when you're doing the little. I know it's simple, Matt. It's not that hard. Yeah, no, you can put in, I can put this whole side here into my calculator, the whole left side, mm -hmm. just X's instead of I's. And yeah. type that in. That's You press math, go to summation, and then fill in the blocks, and it would give you this. You'd be like, okay, this is what the answer is supposed to be. I would also type in what I have here on the right side and make sure they are the same. If they are not the same, then the work that leads to your answer is wrong, and then you're not going to be able to get any of the points. You follow me? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. So we, we're just confirming that using some properties and the summation formulas I give you in the table, that we're matching what the calculator gives us without having to write the whole thing out. Any questions, concerns,